Hey and welcome to this review of the brand new 2023 edition of the Gigabyte Aorus 15. This review is targeting people that are kind of new to gaming laptops or just want to know in general if this is a good gaming laptop and if it will suit them. If you prefer a more in-depth review, make sure to watch this video over here instead. However, this is an exciting machine in my opinion for a lot of reasons, let's find out why. Alright, you have to know that the new Aorus 15 of 2023 will come in a variety of versions. And this one comes with an Intel i5 12500H, which is a decent middle class processor from 2022, as well as an Nvidia RTX 4060 mobile graphics card with 8GB of VRAM. In case you're new to laptop gaming, the RTX 4060 is a pretty capable mid-range GPU which offers enough VRAM for Full HD as of now. It will be absolutely fast enough for any existing PC game to this date and for some time in the future. And most likely for at least 4-5 to five years if you're not spoiled with gaming above 60fps on ultra settings. And in this case, we're unfortunately only getting 8GB of system RAM, which is kinda too small in 2023. But I will also show you on how to open the laptop, upgrade the RAM and install a second M.2 drive. Since additional 8GB start at only $20 to $25 nowadays, I would highly recommend doing so. If you're too afraid of doing that, you should definitely get a version with 16GB or more, or find someone to help you with that step. Furthermore, in this case we're getting an amazing 360Hz Full HD IPS screen with a decent maximum brightness and a great color accuracy. Be aware though that there will be different screens for different models. Now considering the price, as of today this version is one of the cheapest Aorus 15 versions from 2023 and starts at around $1100 to $1200. I found a version with the RTX 4050 on Newegg for $1050 Though in my opinion the 4060 is worth the $100 upgrade if you can afford it since it has a slightly bigger VRAM beside being fast as well. Oh and since I released the extended review a bit before this one, a lot of people told me they got this version or the one with the RTX 4050 for like $700 to $800 which would be an absolute steal. In that case just buy the laptop before someone else does and watch the review afterwards, I'm serious. Before we talk about the build quality, I just wanted to quickly mention that the packaging and the way the laptop is presented is at least a bit above the average experience you see in a gaming laptop that comes in this price category. So the build quality of the Aorus 15 is mostly very good with the bendable top being the only exception but that's mostly due to the fact that it's pretty thin overall. The top and the bottom parts are metal covered whereas the area around the keyboard is of a high quality plastic and the laptop feels pretty nice and very valuable overall. It has a total height of only 21mm when closed, so it's a bit on the thinner side, but it weighs a total of 2.4kg, which is a bit heavier due to its pretty beefy and capable cooling system. And that weight actually adds to the laptop's assumed value. The IC adapter weighs an additional 710g, resulting in a 3.1kg in total. The overall design is kind of subtle but definitely gamerish at the same time. And it has a nice RGB um, LED strip um, beneath the lower display bevel around here, which can be configured individually in terms of colors or animation. As you have seen, you can easily open the display with one hand, which is always a good sign. And the hinges, they felt nice in my opinion, though the maximum angle is pretty narrow due to this um, protruding part at the back if that's important to you. The keyboard offers three RGB zones um, that can be configured with the so-called Gigabyte Control Center to your liking. It is a thin chiclet keyboard and has no numpad unfortunately. I personally prefer higher keys and a numpad, but the keyboard otherwise seems to be built pretty good overall. The touchpad was very slick and felt nice, while also being placed at a good position in the middle of the laptop. But the needed click force was way too high for my taste. I'm pretty sure that situations in which you need to do a lot of clicking will actually be exhausting for your fingers and your wrists if you use the clicking mechanism. Of course you can always just slightly tap to execute a click, but it really is that strong. The Gigabyte Aorus 15 offers a very good set of connections compared to similar laptops. With an impressive of 5 
USB 3 ports plus two additional ports for external monitors, a LAN port and a 3.5mm audio jack. It also supports Thunderbolt and uh, you can charge it via a USB-C adapter up to 100 and watt. That's important for people that like to use smaller adapters for traveling for example. The two downward facing 2 watt speakers can get pretty loud and the sound is okay. Um, as common in this price category, we are not getting a lot of bass and there has been some vibration, vibrating element on the left side on the laptop in certain situations on the full uh, loudness of the speakers. But don't expect too much from the speakers. I actually recommend a headset for most laptops in this price category. The integrated Full HD camera offers Windows Hello for logging in, which worked pretty flawlessly for me. Oh, and by the way, this is what the integrated camera looks like and the integrated microphone sounds like. Now the pre-installed Gigabyte Control Center software allows you to configure fan speed and performance modes to your liking. You can choose between several profiles which combine power levels and fan speeds, but you can also freely combine them and even adjust the fan speed fully manually. And this actually works really well. It's worth mentioning that the laptop's balance mode is actually almost as fast as the turbo mode while being much quieter and I would recommend using it in most situations. You can change these modes via pressing Fn plus F12 or choose them directly in the Gigabyte Control Center. After 20 minutes of playing Cyberpunk 2077 using the turbo mode, the GPU and the CPU both hover around 70 to 75 degrees Celsius at a room temperature of 25 degrees right now, which is perfectly fine. The laptop's cooling system actually is pretty good and in contrast to the cheaper Gigabyte G5, which I've also tested, deserves the WinForce branding. I also have to note that on the highest fan mode, the fan noise gets kinda uncomfortable due to a higher pitch tone instead of the loudness. And when the laptop is idling or only used for YouTube, the fans often turn off completely even on the balanced performance mode. I mean, how cool is that? And since we're getting a great battery um, inside here, I think this could be a great laptop for university or the library if you're willing to carry around the 3.1 kilogram in case you bring the AC adapter or only 2.4 kilogram for the laptop only. Furthermore, the Gigabyte Control Center offers a real so-called MUX switch, which is able to improve the performance a tiny bit by around 3 to 5% if activated. And you can also freely choose the maximum battery charging level between 60 and 100%, which I have never seen before, I think. Now, considering the performance. First, waking up the laptop from sleep happens instantly, almost instantly. And booting the laptop until we see the desktop when it's turned off takes around 23 seconds for a freshly installed system. The Intel i5 12500H with its four performance and eight efficiency cores is neither the newest nor the fastest CPU that Gigabyte could have used for this laptop, but it should be sufficient for everyday tasks as well as gaming and even more work-related stuff that needs a faster CPU in general. And it surely is a budget decision in this case. But with its total of 12 cores and 16 threads, it should be good enough for quite a while in most scenarios. Though I'm actually planning on making a video in which I talk about why getting a faster CPU for gaming laptops usually really pays off after 2-4 to four years. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done that. The built-in 512GB PCIe Gen 4 SSD has decent speeds and ensures that the laptop reacts super quickly. And we even get a second M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slot, but no additional SATA or HDD slots. The big 99 watt hour battery enables pretty good run times. On idle with 20% display brightness and activated Wi-Fi, the laptop achieved a runtime of up to 13.2 hours, which is pretty great. Watching YouTube at 50% brightness with headphones at 20% loudness resulted in a really nice 8.7 hours in total. And even gaming on battery is possible for up to 2 hours or more if you reduce the performance and cap the FPS depending on the game. Though I have to point out that not all games will run ok on battery due to reduced CPU performance, but many of them are perfectly playable. If you're planning on using a 100 watt USB travel charger or something like that on the go, the laptop of course won't be able to maintain its full performance. To open up the laptop for upgrading RAM and the SSDs, you'll have to get rid of the 12 screws on the back side of the laptop. Unfortunately, to do so you need a tiny size 6 Torx screwdriver. 
And even with a magnetic one, I wasn't able to get all screws out of the laptop after releasing them, so I actually used a stronger magnet to help in that case. The four screws at the back are smaller than the rest of the screws, so make sure to keep track of them. Once all screws are released, you need to pry open the laptop with the help of a credit card or a pry tool by sliding it alongside this line over here. Once inside, it's pretty easy to insert a second RAM stick, for which in this case I used a very cheap 8GB stick by Crucial with 4800MHz and a latency of 40CL. Also using the second M.2 slot is straightforward by using a small Phillips screwdriver. Make sure to first unplug the laptop's battery after opening it and don't forget to replug it before closing it. Thanks to the dedicated RTX 4060 with its 8GB of VRAM, you can play any existing game out there if you upgrade the RAM to 16GB, since games like The Last of Us won't work with only a single stick of 8GB installed. I actually compared the 8GB stock configuration versus the 16GB upgrade, which I have done, um, in 7 games and as you can see here, the difference isn't actually that big since we're talking about DDR5, which runs better with only one stick than DDR4 RAM did back in the day. And as I said before, The Last of Us refused to load a safe game with only 8GB present and crashed instantly. That will definitely be the case for more and more upcoming games. P.S. The WASD keys don't get very warm, even in longer gaming sessions. This laptop is also perfectly capable of using creative software like Blender or even 4K video editing with Premiere Pro and similar software. So the Gigabyte Oros 15 this year is a great laptop overall, and especially for around 1,100 euros or dollars, it's a clear recommendation from my side. Of course, it's not perfect. But it's so good in so many aspects that I actually like to own it myself despite the missing numpad and despite the fact that it only sports an Intel i5. But of course, especially beginners should factor in the small 8GB RAM size in this version. Overall the performance is great and sufficient for years to come if we are aware that the i5 will become a bottleneck sooner or later after a while in upcoming games. But this is kind of the budget version and most people, especially beginners, won't need to worry about that right now. So let me make clear that especially if you're going to get your first gaming laptop and are unsure about this one, you can basically get it without hesitation in general if you're getting a 16GB version or if you're confident enough to upgrade the RAM by yourself. And beside the performance, the Gigabyte Aorus 15 is of a pretty high quality overall. It's such a versatile laptop that it's more or less suitable for anybody looking for a decent gaming laptop with a strong battery, a good screen and enough performance to do basically anything you like, if you're willing to upgrade the RAM to 16GB at some point that is. Ok, that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more reviews, mobile GPU tests and other stuff. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss!